Finance Minister Tunku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz unveiled today a raft of measures to boost the country's recovery under Budget 2022, themed Kuaga Malaysia Makmo Sejahtera. Budget 2022 is based on three thrusts the rakyat's well being, resilient businesses, and a prosperous and sustainable economy. Let's take a quick look now at the economic highlights before we go into some of the key takeaways. The government has earmarked a record 332.1 billion for 2022 spending, nearly 3% more than the 322.5 billion announced for budget 2021. 233.5 billion will be set aside for operating expenditure, while 75.6 billion will go towards development spending. 23 billion will go towards stimulus measures under the COVID-19 fund, which will remain in operation until the end of next year. Meanwhile, revenue is expected to rise to 234 billion, up by about 14% from this year. Fiscal deficit is seen moderating to 6% to GDP compared to 6.5% in 2021. The economy should expand by between 5.5 and 6.5% next year, boosted by the continuation of the various stimulus and assistant packages to combat COVID-19. Inflation is seen moderating to 2.1%. In order to assist vulnerable households reeling from the COVID-19 shock, the government is introducing the Bantuan Kuaga Malaysia scheme with an allocation of 8.2 billion ringgit. Under this targeted cash aid scheme, which is set to benefit 9.6 million recipients, households with three children or more with a total income of less than 2,500 ringgit will receive 2,000 ringgit. An extra 500 will be given to single parents with dependents and monthly incomes of up to 5,000 ringgit. Ringgit. An additional handout of 300 will be given to the elderly. Meanwhile, 2.4 billion will be set aside for the welfare department to aid over 440,000 households. 25 million will also go to Yayasan Kwaga Malaysia to support children often due to COVID-19. As for PTPTM borrowers, they will be offered 10 to 15% discounts depending on their chosen repayment option. And to increase disposable incomes, Putrajaya will extend the period to reduce the EPF minimum contribution rate from 11 to 9 percent until June 2022. Individuals will see the tax relief for the purchase of mobile phones, computers, and tablets raised to 2,500 ringgit until the end of 2022. Also extended. The 100% sales tax waiver for CKD passenger vehicles and 50% sales tax exemption for CBU. Those aged between 18 and 20 will also benefit from the new eStart cashless transaction scheme, which will see a one off deposit of 150 ringgit into their e wallets. Civil servants, meanwhile, will get a 1.3 billion ringgit allocation. A total of 1.3 million civil servants, grade 56 and below, will receive a one-off 700 ringgit cash aid, while 1 million pensioners will get 350 ringgit each. The government is also aiming to provide Malaysians with job security under Budget 2022. With its Jamin Kerja initiative, Putrajaya is aiming to create 600,000 job opportunities with a total allocation of 4.8 billion ringgit. According to the Finance Minister, 2 billion will be set aside to continue the wage subsidy program to encourage the hiring of 300,000 jobless individuals. This incentive is on the condition that employers offer these individuals a monthly salary of 1,500 ringgit and above. Higher subsidies will be available for those that employ persons with disabilities, orang asli, women returning to work and former inmates. Meanwhile, the MyStep initiative will be continued with 80,000 job placements to be offered in the public sector and GLCs. 1.1 billion will also be allocated for training programs and upskilling for 220,000 trainees. Individuals looking to advance themselves will enjoy tax relief of 2,000 to 7,000 ringgit for upskilling courses with approved professional bodies. As for those in the tourism sector, Putrajaya will allocate a total of 1.6 billion billion ringgit in initiatives to prop up the industry. 
600 million will go to the Panjana Tourism Financing and the BPMB Rehabilitation Scheme. There will be 85 million in assistance for 20,000 tourism operators. The government will also extend a special tax relief of up to 1,000 to encourage domestic tourism. Housing is another focus under Budget 2022. The government will continue implementing housing projects, especially for the low-income earners, with a total allocation of 1.5 billion ringgit. Zafro says the government will also no longer impose the real property gains tax for property disposals by individual citizens, permanent residents and other companies starting from the sixth year and above. Putrajaya also wants to aid gig workers, micro-entrepreneurs and farmers. Starting next year, the government will provide a 2 billion ringgit guarantee to banks via the Housing Credit Guarantee Scheme to provide them access to financing. As global economies take their first shaky steps out of the COVID-19 crisis, the government has made the recovery of businesses their top priority. Budget 2022 included a host of incentives and assistance schemes to be offered to businesses in general, especially the SMEs. According to Zafrol, the key area of focus will be to enhance access to financing. As such, a total of 40 billion will be allocated under the Samara Nyaga program, which includes direct loans, financing guarantees, and equity injections. It will be for businesses of all sizes, ranging from micro enterprises to public listed companies. 1.8 billion will be channeled through the microcredit schemes of various agencies such as the Kon, Agrobank, Bank Sipana National, Bank Rakyat and Bank Negara Malaysia. The government will also continue to support equity crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer financing platforms. To assist companies facing gearing or leverage issues, 2.1 billion will be available in funding avenues via equity and quasi-equity investments. This initiative will be spearheaded by SME Bank in collaboration with Taraju and BSN. There will also be a special initiative to assist Bursa Malaysia listed companies companies which will see the injection of funds into companies hurt by COVID-19 via a government-owned special purpose vehicle. In this instance, Sovereign Wealth Fund Kazana National will be given the mandate to help the government ready the infrastructure required to manage a fund of at least 3 billion ringgit. However, there are some businesses that will have to pay the piper. In order to replenish its coffers, the government announced Chukai Makmo, a one-off special windfall tax to companies that have managed to generate extraordinary revenue during the pandemic. Companies with a chargeable income for the first 100 million will be subjected to an income tax rate of 24%, while the remaining chargeable income will be subject to a 33% tax rate for the year of assessment 2022. A service tax will be imposed on goods delivery services, including e-commerce platforms, excluding food and beverage services. A sales tax will also be imposed on goods not exceeding 500 ringgit from abroad, sold online by sellers and sent to consumers in Malaysia via air service. For Budget 2022, the two ministries that got the biggest allocations were education and health. The Ministry of Education continues to get the biggest slice of the pie with an allocation of 52.6 billion, while the Higher Education Ministry will get 14.5 billion ringgit. This includes an increase in early schooling assistance for each student from 100 to 150 ringgit. Total allocation 450 million. Another billion will also be channeled for the improvement of schools. That aside, the government will also provide one tablet each for 600,000 undergraduates from B40 families to aid them with online learning. For this, the government will make available 450 million in funds alongside contributions from telecommunications companies that will give around 65 million ringgit. As for the Ministry of Health, the government has allocated 32.4 billion for operating and development expenditure. To continue the fight against COVID-19, 2 billion will be channeled into the purchase of vaccines and another 2 billion for related expenses. The government will secure another 88 million doses of vaccines, which according to Zafrul is enough to cover 140% of the population and enough to give the third booster dose to every single Malaysian above 12 years of age. According to Zafrul, Budget 2022 also aims to ensure a healthier Malaysia. 
The government is proposing to extend the imposition of excise duties on sweetened drinks in premixed forms based on chocolate or cocoa malt, coffee and tea. Also in the pipeline, a plan to impose excise duties on liquid products or gel containing nicotine used in electronic cigarettes and vape. Meanwhile, the government has agreed to extend the appointment by contract of more than 10,000 medical, dental and pharmaceutical officers after their two-year compulsory service to a maximum of four years. COVID-19 also put a spotlight on the importance of mental health following months of isolation. As such, Zafro says that 70 million has been earmarked to strengthen support counselling and psychology services, increase advocacy programmes and boost the role of NGOs as movers of mental health programmes. Finally, in an effort to help end period poverty, the government will make available free self-hygiene kits to young women in the B40 category monthly, which will benefit some 130,000 youths nationwide. In addition, 11 million would be allocated to subsidise mammogram tests for women who are considered high risk, as well as tests for cervical cancer.